Tonight, an unusual storm forms and activity resumes on both sides of the Pacific. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 31st. As we say goodbye to July, we have quite the activity in the wide world of tropics as we have no less than four systems active. Those being in no particular order, Hurricane Frank, as well as Tropical Storms, Georgette and 1S, and a Tropical Depression, Songda, bringing the total number of storms up to 39. Now, if Songa intensifies some more, that will bring our total storm count up to 40. As of now, that has not happened yet. Now, despite all this activity, we still remain unclassified on our Tropical Cyclone Operations Scale, or TCOS for short. So sit back and grab the popcorn because we have quite a lot to get to discuss tonight. And despite all the activity in the world right about now, the Atlantic remains silent as a mouse. That's right, not a single thing to speak of here tonight, uh, with not even an area of interest active here. Now, if the Atlantic wants to become the next Central Pacific, then that's fine by me. Moving on to the Pacific, Hurricane Frank remains in the spotlight as a Category 1 hurricane out to sea and Georgette not expected to intensify any further. Now both are no threat to land and will continue to move out to sea. And we're also introducing a new area of interest which has some decent ensemble support, but for the moment we're keeping this at a cautionary 10%. The other side of the Pacific sees Tropical Depression Songda, which is not yet a tropical storm and likely won't ever be one as it is very close to land right about now. Not to mention Invest 95W to Songda's south, which we have decided to retain at a 20% chance of formation as it is running out of time to form. And finally, to the west of Invest 95W, is an area of interest which we have designated another 10% chance. Now, we will continue to monitor this area for possible development. It's business as usual in the North Indian Ocean as nothing is expected to form in this part of the world as is the norm for this time of year. Now, 1S still remains unnamed and we believe it is, still remains a tropical storm. Now, it is quite rare to see storms of this nature in this part of the world at this time of year. So maybe this upcoming season will be something quite remarkable. As always, we can only wait and see. Jumping into satellite imagery views for the Atlantic, once again, devoid of any tropical activity with not even an area of interest, an invest or anything at all to speak of. Over in the Eastern Pacific, Frank and Georgette are pretty much hanging out, both moving away from any land areas, uh, Frank being the dominant system here. Both storms are expected to weaken from this point forward, however. Songda is currently in the Yellow Sea currently as a tropical depression, not expected to strengthen into a tropical storm at all at this point. To Songda's south is Invest 95W with a 20% chance of formation as both systems continue to track northwards. No tropical activity in the North Indian Ocean as is the norm for this time of year with just the usual monsoonal patterns ongoing. Meanwhile, in the Southwest Indian Ocean, 1S continues its unusual pattern of straight up existing as it is rare. It is a rare out to, sea, out to season storm is what I'm trying to say. Still yet to receive a name, probably won't receive one at all. Uh, however, it will continue tracking westwards, crossing the 90 degree east line before dissipating. So here's a closer look at Hurricane Frank, currently located at 17.2 degrees north and 117.1 degrees west. Frank currently has a wind speed of 90 miles an hour as per the NHC and a central pressure of 975 millibars. Now Frank is expected to be peaking right about now as it continues moving northwest, weakening as it does so. So we'll just let the animation play out right about here. As you can see in 24 hours, uh, 36 hours I should mention, it's expected to weaken back to a tropical storm strength system before completely dissipating in roughly around 72 hours time from now. 
Once again, here is Tropic Storm Georgia, currently located at 13.6 degrees north and 127.7 degrees west, with a wind speed of 50 miles an hour and a center pressure of 999 millibars. It is expected to continue westwards before being pulled northwards by the influence of Frank. So once again, we'll just let the animation play out here. As you can see, it's expected to begin a almost 180 degree turn in 24 hours time from now before this animation ends up looking like a complete mess on your screen. Uh, obviously this system is expected to continue beyond 72 hours from now is just how far the animation that uh, my template goes. Now over in the western pacific is tropical depression Songda, currently located at 33.5 degrees north and 123.6 degrees east. Now we are maintaining it as a depression still with a wind speed of 35 miles an hour and a rather low central pressure of 992 millibars. Songda is expected to travel to the northeast dissipating shortly before landfall in North Korea. It is worth noting that we do not expect Sonda to intensify into a tropical storm. And finally down under is Tropical Storm 1S. This system is currently located at 14 degrees south and 92.4 degrees east with a wind speed of 45 miles an hour and a central pressure of also 999 millibars. 1S will slowly travel westwards crossing the 90 degree east line as it does so but it remains short-lived and is, as it is expected to dissipate shortly after crossing that 90 degree line. Here are the multi-model diagnostics starting off with Frank. Models believe this system to be peaking right about now as practically all models show weakening from this point onwards. Now shear is looking favorable for this system for now but as time progresses shear will slowly creep upwards. Uh, sea surface temperatures are also rapidly falling for Frank and mid-level relative humidity is also headed on a declining trend for this system. Georgette's turn now and this is another system that we aren't expecting rapid development from. In fact, quite the opposite as models take this system for a steady pace for the time being uh, but shear is not looking favorable for this system uh, for the not too distant future but it is expected to go back down in a few days. Sea surface temperatures are slowly declining for this system as well. However, mid-level relative humidity is on an uptrend for Georgette. Song Denau, and right off the bat, these charts are really, they're just disappointing. Slow weakening is expected for Songda, as shear is expected to skyrocket to just barely off the charts. Uh, however, sea surface temperatures are remaining above the threshold for tropical cyclone development just barely. Uh, for the newcomers here, that threshold is 26 degrees Celsius and mid-level relative humidity, however, is on the decline as well for Songda. Finally, it's time for 1S, which the models don't take this system very far either, partially because deep layer shear is expected to crash through the roof with sea surface temperatures dipping above and below the previously mentioned threshold and mid-level relative humidity also below its favorability threshold for tropical cyclone development. Now for newcomers, that value I believe is 60%. Don't forget, you can go to our merch store where you can buy things such as mugs, pillows, or an individual animation in which you can go all out with the playing stages of your wildest dreams and sending them our way. It can be crazier than the crazy 2027 on the Extra channel, however eye bleach may be required. Also worth mentioning is our still waiting for Hone shirts, which celebrate a thousand days of the Central Pacific not waking up to produce a single spinning storm. Moving on to the sea surface uh, temperatures now, excuse me, the Western Pacific remaining piping hot with around 30 degrees Celsius waters, the Bay of Bengal remaining also 30 degrees, the Arabian Sea largely 27 to 28 with temperatures off the coast of Somalia significantly cooler. The tropical Atlantic remains nice and toasty with waters, re waters excuse me, reaching 28 degrees in the main development region. The Gulf of Mexico, however, remaining with 29 to 30 degree temperatures. And the tropical Eastern and Central Pacific registering roughly around 28 degrees Celsius. 
Onto the sea surface temperature anomalies now, the eastern and central Pacific are warming up still slightly below average, but getting above in several places. The western Pacific still remains largely warmer than average, the Atlantic pretty much above, but once again a hard to miss pocket of below in the subtropics, which to my eye looks like it's shrinking. Uh, the Bay of Bengal uh, also remains above average, the Arabian Sea slowing, slowly getting back above average. However, most notably present is just a small pocket just off the coast of Somalia, extending into the purples, which according to the scale on the bottom of your screen right there means significantly below average. Oceanic heat content in the Atlantic continues to improve, with the most notable area being the Caribbean Sea. The Gulf of Mexico also housing some significant energy, and in third place, the main development region with some energy present. However, all areas of the Atlantic still gaining energy, just waiting for the next system to form. The Western Pacific remains full of energy with a lot of red towards the east of the Philippines. The Eastern and Central Pacific gaining small amounts of energy, but once again, it's no contest at the moment in regards to what part of the Pacific has the most oceanic heat content energy. Today's On This Day brings us all the way back to 1979, where the spotlight was shining on Super Typhoon Hope. Now, hope wasn't bringing much hope to the Philippines today as it would pass northwards of Luzon, but not without causing serious damage to the country, as this typhoon also peaked today with, I believe, winds of 180 miles an hour according to Force 13 analysis. Recon also managed to obtain a central pressure of below 900 millibars today as well. Active elsewhere in the world was Tropical Depression 6L, which eventually would pass west of Bermuda without intensifying into a tropical storm. So, after this mammoth tropical weather bulletin, we are now on the next names for each respective basin's naming list. Next up in the Atlantic is Danielle, followed by Earl. In the Eastern Pacific, we are on the lookout for Howard, followed by Yvette. And up next in the Central Pacific, you really do not need me to say this any more than I have done in the past several months, the next name is Hone. Up next in the Western Pacific, starting off list 5 is Treses, followed by Mulan. I hope I've pronounced those names correctly, apologies if I haven't. Up next in the North Indian Ocean is Sitrang, followed by Mandus. And bringing things down under, up next in the Australian region is Darien followed by Ellie. We might have seen Darien had the Bureau of Meteorology decided to follow suit. First up in the Southwest Indian Ocean is Ashley followed by Belita. And finally up next in the South Pacific is Harley followed by Irene. That's all from me for now. We'll see you for another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.